Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today we will see how to create a beautiful melting effect, as you can see here on this render. We will see how to play with the properties of the particle toner to change the viscosity of the liquid and how to apply a good UVW mapping to our simulation. You can of course find this complete project on Patreon like all the other projects. Okay, let's start now. Okay, so now we are into this max, and here we can see the model I use for this effect. So we will now see how to create the melting effect. Okay, so the first thing to check is to go here in Unit Setup, Customize, Unit Setup, and to check that the display unit scale is in centimeter by centimeter. Okay, perfect. Now what I will do is to create a Fedix FD liquid guide, maybe like this. Go to grid 20, 20, 20. I can now adjust the grid on my mesh like this and maybe up here and here. Okay, perfect. I will now select my mesh here, go to Phoenix property and select initial liquid fill. Same for this one initial liquid and of course i don't want to see the mesh in my render so i will go to object property select display as box and not renderable same for this one object property display as box not renderable okay i can now go back to my simulation here select jammed 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 for the grade for the dynamic, I change nothing here for the moment. I will just up the viscosity to a value of 1. Activate the weighting. Sticky liquid to 1. I will now go in the output and um, activate particle age, particle viscosity. Same here, grade viscosity and grade texture UVW that will be used later to add a texture to the mesh. Okay. For the preview, show the mesh and deactivate particle preview. Okay, I think it's good like this. I can now maybe increase the resolution to a value of 0.3, I think. And I will now start a simulation. Okay. Okay, so we have here a good simulation with the shape I used, but we can see that the mesh starts falling and it's not what we want. So to fix that, you can go here in grade and up the scene scale. If I up the scene to a big value, like maybe 50, and I relaunch the simulation, we can see now that we don't have this problem anymore. The mesh don't move, it's perfect. Of course, we can increase the resolution to have a very good mesh. Maybe a value like this. I can relaunch. We start to have a good result here. To have a better clean mesh, you can go here in rendering. Go to mesh smoothing. Activate the used liquid particles, maybe 0 0.9. And up the smoothness to a value of maybe 10. Great, really cool like this. Okay, so we have here a good liquid mesh and the mesh don't move. It's perfect for the moment. What we want to do now is to change the viscosity value of the mesh. So to do that, we will create a sphere. Standard primitive, sphere. And I will animate my sphere, maybe. Okay, so now what you want to do is to change the viscosity of the mesh by the help of the sphere. I will now go to here helper, Phoenix FD, and create a particle tunnel. Particle tunnel here. I can go in edit condition, and we will now use the particle tunnel to create condition to activate the change of the viscosity. We can see here a lot of options, like here the age, or you can set the distance, texture, number, and many other things. So I will change 
is greater than by is less than. For this option, I will not select age, but I will select distance too and select my sphere. Okay. And for the value, maybe a random value between 1 and 5. I can now go here in viscosity and change the viscosity to a low value. So maybe 0 and set to. So set to 0. So basically, when the distance to the sphere will be less than random value between 1 and 5, the viscosity will change to a value of 0. OK, I can now launch the simulation to see if it works. I will just up a bit the voxel to simulate faster. I can launch. And we can see here a problem. OK, it's because I have to go to object property, same renderable, displays box, and of course, go to Phoenix property and select not a solid object. So we will now have interaction between this object and the mesh. OK, I can now relaunch. And we start to see that it works. The mesh start melting activated by the sphere. OK, so the reflect start to looks very cool, but I don't like the liquid result here. It looks like maybe water and it's not what I want. If I want, I can change the effect of the viscosity when the liquid will hit the grind. So to do that, it's really simple. I will just duplicate my particle tunnel. OK. Create here a plane. Of course, object properties, displace box, not renderable, and Phoenix property, not a solid object. I can go select my second particle toner, go to edit condition, right click, replace with this and new. OK, so I will select not the sphere, but here, the plane. So why the end here? Because this particle tunnel will be activated first and after this one. OK, I can go back here. So I'm in end in less than a distance to the plane to a value of maybe number of. I think one is good. And I will stay here as greater. And for this second option, I will stay with is greater than. I will stay with the age an age of zero, so it will start directly. OK. And for the viscosity, I will up the viscosity to a value of 1 to have the same value that the main simulation. OK, I can relaunch to see if it works. And as you can see here, we don't have this water effect anymore. The liquid is really sticky here. It's great. OK, I think it's a good start. Now I will up maybe the value. I can maybe go back to the grid and increase here and here. Increase the voxel size to maybe value like this. And what you can do to finish is to up the step or frame, maybe to a value of 3. This option will help to avoid bubble and to uh, make the liquid stay remain when the simulation will follow. But we can again up the voxel size if we want. Or play maybe here with a smooth. Maybe 5. OK, better. Now what we have to do is just to wait that the simulation is finished. OK, it's a great melting effect. As I said, if you want a better and clean mesh, you can just go here and increase the stepper frame. It will help to make your simulation look more sticky. 
You can of course decrease the time scale that will slow a bit the simulation, but you will have a better simulation. Okay, we can try. Maybe five and the one point seven. Maybe the value of 0, 0.0 is maybe too slow. I can set maybe value like this, 0 0.1. Let's try like this. Okay, I will stop the simulation here and we can see that we have something more sticky here. Maybe like a candle melting effect. It's really great. Really cool like this. Okay, now if you want to export this animation, what you have to do is to go here in export, select mesh, and you can select your mesh here, file, export selected, Melting, select Alambic, and save. And for the range, frame 0 to 60. Okay, I can export. I will now import the file, import, merge. I can see here my melting point ABC. Open, import, okay. And you can see here the effect. It's really cool. Okay, I will now show you how to apply the UVW mapping from the mesh to the melting effect. So I go here. I have here my texture and I will apply the texture to the Phoenix liquid. Okay. And you can see here that it not fit really good. The texture don't fit the original mapping of the mesh. So to fix that, I will create here a Phoenix liquid source. In this one, activate here. Phoenix liquid source. Go to the liquid source and I will add my two mesh here, here. For the velocity, maybe a value of 10. And after to zero, I only want the effect in one frame. Activate viscosity and set a value of one. And select inherit text UVW from geometry. So it will use the UVW of the two geometry here. Okay, so go back here and activate in a read. And if I relaunch now my simulation, we can see that we have the good mapping. It's great. I just have to relaunch the simulation in all the frame and the effect will look really good with the good UVW mapping. Okay guys, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot of things. Don't forget the thumb up and to subscribe if you like my work. You can find the complete project on Patreon. And of course, you can follow me on Instagram or Beyond if you want. See you soon for the next tutorial, guys. Bye.